Hey guys, so I thought I'd give you an update on my Inca 560 joiner planer uh, external motor drive function for the planer feed. I just finished uh, finalizing this. I finally have this thing dialed in. I ended up replacing that DC servo sewing machine motor with a DC gear motor with a, uh, you know, has gear reduction built in, so it has a lot higher torque at lower speeds. Um, and I actually want to thank uh, Frank for that. He sent me a direct message and, and referenced me to his write-up that he did. So he already did this. Uh, I had no idea. I didn't find it within the, the forum um, search. Uh, but he loaded a file in there that outlined basically everything he, he had done. So um, I just uh, thanks Frank for that. Uh, I did a little bit different approach than he did. So he had put his motor here and then cut away for the motor mounted on the table. I ended up mounting it on the underside because I didn't want to modify anything. So you can see you can't tell at all that anything's going on here, just like the previous setup. I was able to get away with using the same chain link just by luck uh, once I added in the additional roller to get some more chain wrap here. And by adding in this roller, you're narrowing the exit point for this chain and uh, you can get away with actually a smaller cutout. I did pretty wide to give myself some room when I was trying to position the motor, but but much better than using this this plastic gear here where you gotta you have to worry about the belts and then you have to worry about keeping this thing lubricated and then it melting and this is the real Achilles heel of this machine in my opinion. So I'm happy to have that thing off. Um, so yeah, so you can see here it comes underneath to a DC gear motor uh, with fully adjustable um, speed control. This thing tops out at 57 RPM, so I ran all the numbers and, and got the appropriate size metric sprocket, bored it out to 5 8 added a keyway, but actually I don't think I'm going to use the keyway in this. Uh, I think I'm going to try to add a, a safety mechanism in here so where this this will slip in the event of a jam. So rather than use the keyway, I'm going to drill and tap for a set screw and I'm going to use like a brass headed set, uh, set screw. And I'm going to file maybe just a little flat spot on the shaft and then tighten that thing down with the idea being that if you get a jam in here without the key in, uh, and just using the, the pressure from the set screw that if enough um, resistance is applied on the system that, that that sprocket will slip and just spin freely on the shaft if you end up getting a jam. And then that will cover all your bases in terms of the safety and then everything else. So then that's, this makes for a really complete system. So let me show you. It's, it's a 110 volt motor. Um, and initially I was thinking, oh, I'm going to wire it into the 220 here. But then I realized that you can't really do that because the 220 has two hot legs, two 110s, and then a ground. There's no neutral. And you need the neutral on this and you really don't want to be wiring in the neutral to the ground. Um, so I think, for the t I think I'm just going to do a 110 uh, for now. I'm just going to have a plug that just plugs in. Uh, it's no big deal. Um, so yeah, so you can see here, let me turn it on so you can hear how it sounds. So it goes all the way low, this is totally low. You can see this thing just creeps along. This is high. And high, it runs about 20 linear feet per minute. Still slower than something like a lunchbox planer like that, that runs at uh, 26 feet per minute. But the stock speeds on the low feed are about 11 feet linear feet per minute and then 16 linear feet per minute so that those correspond to here and here and then you obviously have everywhere in between so if you're doing highly figured wood or or just want to get a super smooth glass finish you can just slow that slow it down even more and get a nice speed so let me show you this is about the stock slow speed that theme along. Grab the board here. This is stock high. And then of course you have everywhere in between. So you can go super slow. Super fast. I mean you have a lot of versatility here. And the maintenance on here is basically nothing. I mean, a little lubrication on the chain, 
and and just keep keep an eye on the brushes after so many hours of use and you should be fine um, but yeah so there it is huge improvement in my opinion so now I'm gonna go through and really dial in the rest of the machine I'm gonna level out the tables I'm gonna have to shim them um, I already had the bed of the planer aligned to the cutter head uh, so that's ready to go and once I get the tables all dialed in this this machine should be good and then I'm gonna work on dust collection and the final step is this is the new tabletop it's an inch and a half thick laminated plywood but I need to make a new base this is what it came with and this is just not gonna work for me but um, I'm gonna make probably a steel legged base with with built on we you know locking casters and everything so I uh, just thought I'd give you guys an update on this uh, definitely check out Frank's uh, tutorial uh, and that'll give you a much better idea on how to do this but if you end up going with this style of motor you can mess it on the underside and uh, makes for a super clean setup and uh, and yeah so just thought I'd share with you guys throw throw that info out there all right have a good one